Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on culture and identity, looking at the work of Pierre Bourdieu on culture. Throughout his life, French sociologist Pierre Bourdieu wrote extensively on culture and its influence on everyday life. His work was largely formed from his observations of sections of French society and how different sections of society shared similar tastes, attributes and habits, what he came to call their habitus. Bourdieu's concepts of habitus, field, disposition and forms of capital were highly influential in sociological thinking and remain so to this day, influencing many academics across multiple disciplines. One of Bourdieu's most notable contributions was the concept of cultural capital, the value attributed to one's tastes, attitudes and preferences, their habitus, in a given social context or field. Bourdieu noticed that each section of French society had a distinct habitus, including the food they liked, the books they read, the language they used and the music they listened to, and that having this knowledge was rewarded with value, the individual's cultural capital, by those that had similar tastes. This was common across the different sections of French society that Bourdieu observed. From these observations, Bourdieu developed his theory of habitus. He argued that individuals adopted strategies that allowed them to successfully adapt to the social world or field in which they inhabited. According to Bourdieu, this was most successful when it was done subconsciously through immersion in that cultural habitus. Whilst habitus could be learnt, there were noticeable differences between those whose habitus was natural and those who had learned to adopt these cultural attitudes and preferences. The extent to which individuals displayed a similar habitus to those in their field led to more cultural capital being ascribed to them. Bourdieu also developed field theory, which explained the rules of the game or the social expectations of the different fields. He defined these fields as being the social spaces that individuals found themselves in, and each had unwritten rules about what was desirable and what was not. In French society, these fields were largely based upon occupations or level of education, in a similar way to the social class system in the UK. Within their field, individuals would be ascribed value. An example of this could be put forward by examining the British social class system. Public schools such as Eton and Harrow develop a similar habitus to that of traditional institutions such as Parliament or Oxford and Cambridge University, which explains how individuals from public school are able to seamlessly transition through these systems. They have similar tastes, attributes and preferences to others that inhabit this space, and this gives them higher cultural capital within that field. Cultural capital, therefore, is a value that is ascribed to individuals by others with similar tastes and attributes who inhabit the same field. But Bourdieu suggested that individuals have multiple capitals which influence their position. Social capital, the connections an individual has. Economic capital, their access to resources. And educational capital, the value ascribed to their educational qualifications. For example, how society may ascribe a higher value to an Oxbridge education than one from a post-1992 university. It doesn't mean it is a better education, but it has a higher status and therefore more educational capital. Like other forms of capital, the higher the cultural capital ascribed to an individual, the more status they have within that field and the more advantages they will have when negotiating that field. Again, using British politics as an example, Old Etonians will have more advantages in negotiating Parliament and the civil service because they have a similar habitus to others in that field. A further concept developed from the work of Bourdieu is that of symbolic capital. This is prestige that is ascribed to an individual as a reward for having desirable knowledge within a certain field. This could occur through admiration of an individual's specific tastes or status within a group conferred for having a particular attitude. Symbolic capital reinforces an individual's position of prominence in a group, and this is common throughout the social class system. 
from knowledge of literature to the way people dress, symbolic capital is awarded based upon the admiration of others. An example of this is drawn from education, where Archer et al. found symbolic capital was given to working class pupils who wore the right kind of sportswear. Symbolic capital helps to explain how individuals are able to successfully negotiate their positions within groups and how cultural artifacts can award individuals status. Bourdieu's work remains highly influential in contemporary society, particularly in the fields of culture, education and stratification. It offers an alternative explanation to traditional Marxists that suggest individuals are held in their social strata by economic means, focusing more on the cultural knowledge of individuals. Furthermore, in recent years, Bourdieu's ideas have been applied, somewhat pragmatically, to trying to improve social mobility and tackle educational barriers that working class children face in education. However, Bourdieu's concepts of field, habitus and capital are less well applied in this instance. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video looking at culture and identity, focusing on the work of Pierre Bourdieu on culture. Thanks for watching.